Welcome back to Mirror's Signal podcast. I'm your host, Josh Holleran, and today we are joined by Terry Cook from The Instructor Podcast. In today's episode, Terry talks about his new project, and that's driving instructors to Vision Zero. So through the episode, he talks about Vision Zero and the other resources that are available to driving instructors to help us with road safety, either on our lessons or things that we can use across our social media to help share the word of road safety. If you're currently watching this episode, you can also listen to the audio version, and that's available on YouTube Music. If you've got any questions or any thoughts on the episode, please leave them in the comments. You can also give the episode a like and make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you've got any questions for me, I can be reached on my Facebook page or the Facebook group, and they're both available at Mirrors Signal Podcast. For now, we'll get on with the episode. I hope you all enjoy. Terry, welcome back. How are you doing? I am not bad, Josh. How are you? I'm great, thank you. It's it's good to have you back, second time on the podcast. Pleasure to be here, as always. <laughs> and there's no correction on the podcast. We'll go with that. We'll work with that one for tonight. I, I'm, I'll let that slide for now. It's uh, <laughs> still not a podcast, but it's on YouTube, <laughs> so it's closer to being a podcast. We're almost there, slowly getting there. But how's yours going? We'll, uh, we'll give that a quick plug before we get into today. But you're deep into your latest season. Well, I won't go to say deep in, uh, but we are into it. As as we're recording this, we are, episode one came out a couple of days ago on Sunday the oh, 17th. Yeah, Sunday the 17th came out. Uh, that was with Rebecca Morris of, of Road Peace and Vision Zero Communications. Um uh, episode two is ready to go out next Sunday, which is with uh, Professor Jimmy Briggs. And we're talking all about distracted driving, in particular mobile phone use. And then obviously we're episodes lined up. So one episode in. Really good. I'm loving it. The, we, we themed it this year or this season, sorry, is road safety and um, bridging the gap between driving instructors and the road safety sector. I'm having so much fun with it. It's um, it's something a bit different, something a bit of a challenge, a challenge getting them on board, a challenge getting instructors on board, but I love a challenge, so we're all good. <laughs> How's that going for you at the minute? That's what I wanted to talk about tonight was the projects that you've got going on. So how's it going, linking those two different sectors, which I think should be working closer together? How are you getting on with that? When you think about working with your learners and how often they'll be obsessed with test and we have to bring them away from that. And it can just be that challenge and you go on Facebook groups and you see the learners asking about the the, the the theory test apps and you see them asking about test routes and this kind of stuff. That's what it like. That's what it's like with road safety and driving instructors a lot of the time. You know, there's the, it seems to put the shutters up at, at times. It's like... Um, standards check this and standards check that and you know all, all this kind of stuff so it's it's more challenging in that sense however it's becoming more rewarding um it's going better than i expected it to but not as well as i hoped it would i think it's probably a good way to describe it but i am getting such a warm embrace from the road safety sector and so many of the people that I speak to are open and willing to work with instructors and now wanting to. But when I ask them the question of why haven't you before, the answer is often I don't know. They can't always give me an answer. They sometimes give me a slightly different one when I'm not recording, admittedly. But <laughs> generally, they say I don't know. And they're starting to get a little bit more excited at the idea of working with instructors now and a lot of the instructors are talking to are starting to get a little bit more excited like i say they're harder to win over in some cases but i think as people are bridging that gap it's um it's, it's quite exciting where do we find information about this i've seen bits that you've been sharing on your facebook but it does seem like for me as an instructor there's all of our groups are generally around standards checks and kind of 
instructor related topics but little about the road safety sector and what we can do how how can we make that difference with our learners i think there's there's, there's two different questions there how can we make the difference with the learners and where can we find it so where can we find it i mean you can do what i do but just go and look for it and if i'm being completely honest the best place to find road safety stuff is either on linkedin or in that cesspit hellhole that is twitter slash x um that's where they tend to be so you can find a lot of stuff over there but that's kind of what i'm trying to do and look i hold my hands up this is hard work it's a slow burner but the the project title the working title that i've got is is driving instructors driving instructors at two vision zero so if you go on facebook and, and i'm sure you'll be kind of sort of link up for me driving instructors two vision zero facebook page I am sharing more and more stuff over there. Uh, I am putting it out slightly in the Instructor Podcast realm as well. So there's some stuff that gets shared there. There's some stuff that gets put on the Instructor Podcast WhatsApp channel. There's some stuff that goes in the emails. But the place where you're going to get it all is on Driving Instructors 2 Vision Zero Facebook page. Um, but again, like I say, is a slow burn. For more detailed stuff, it's on the Instructor Podcast this season. I say it is a road safety season, so we're getting deep into the, the, the weeds with these people. When this season finishes, which is in uh, May, it will be May or June, I can't remember now, um, there's a brand new podcast kicking off called Driving Instructors 2 Vision Zero. There will be a monthly podcast basically picking up where this season ends. So every month there'll be someone on from the road safety sector um providing this information providing these resources and we've got other things lined up uh which i don't want to go into too much in detail not because i don't want people to copy it but because i can't guarantee it's going to go through <laughs> but we've got some stuff lined up with video content and getting to events and stuff like that so i'm aiming to put it out there in an easy access place for instructors to find but if you want to find stuff now linkedin and cesspit twitter is the, the best place to go the other question you asked me was how do we make that difference with our learners oh that's a bigger question so i'll answer this <laughs> as i can i'll let you dig into it more i think that i initially came at this the wrong way i think when i first started looking into this i was thinking from my perspective what can i do with my learners to make them more road safe i don't think that's the route we need to go because I think that as instructors, we should be doing that anyway. You know, we should be teaching uh, safe driving for life, not just a pass a driving test, which is what my instructor said to me, but didn't. And then I nearly died several times. But the we should be teaching those high levels of the GDA matrix. And I know you've had Lee Jow on here talking about that, so I won't delve into that too much. But we should be teaching that anyway. So I don't think that I necessarily want to go down that road too much with the road safety sector. I want to look at what else we can do. So whether it's the uh, drive fit project from uh, Dr. Elizabeth Box, which I now send to all of my students and their learners. Now, admittedly, I think that video is about 90 minutes long, but it does break into smaller sections. But sending that as a resource, whether it's um, the different podcast, well, whatever, I won't go through them all, but whatever resources there is, make them available to students. I think that's what we need to do. I think we can tie things in to the conversations we have at the side of the road. So it doesn't need to be pull up. I'm going to spend 20 minutes talking about why you shouldn't use your mobile phone. But it can be if we pull up talking about this thing, let's use this example and, and drip it in there. There's also resources we can send to people about that. But I also think the big thing we can be doing, and I can touch on more on this if you want, I think we should be campaigning more. I think we should be putting more things out, public facing, social media, websites around road safety and I suppose even bigger, Vision Zero, to promote that. So it's not just the in-car conversation. It's this is who we are. This is what we do. This is how we're making your road safer. I love that. There's a lot to be said for what's uh, what's going on when we're in the car and then the bigger picture, because a lot of what I've seen is the the bad habits are formed before they get in the car with us as learners and then trying to 
change that in the lessons is where I struggle because we have the mindset of it's not going to happen to me. So it can be a challenge and being able to signpost my students and send them to different things, different resources is certainly something that I need to do more of as an instructor. But where is this passion come from that you've got then? What, how have we got to where we are now with driving instructors to Vision Zero? Everyone's, I think, either got or will get a statistic that bothers them. Um, I, and mine was way back on season one when I first spoke to James Lockhurst from Project Edward. Uh, for those that don't know, Project Edward is every day without a road death. And it was speaking to him that I found out that every day five people die on UK roads. Now, that's an average. There are the occasional day when no one dies, it averages out. But I can remember hearing that for the first time, being like, hold on, five people every day. And everyone's cool with this. What, why? Why is this not a bigger deal? Five people dying every day. There's like 1,700 people a year dying, and no one knows. And the people that do know don't care, you know, and it's like, how is this a thing? So it started boiling under me for there. Now, I think part of the reason why it took a long time to come out is I wasn't as confident a person three years ago as I am now. So when I did that episode with James Lockhurst, I can specifically remember people commenting and saying, oh, if I, you know, no one dying a day is not realistic and then me shying away a little bit and going, oh, well, I can't say up to that, right? Okay, yeah, that man said a thing. I need to be quiet. You know, and I wasn't as confident. And I think it's just kind of boiled or simmered away. And it was probably the middle of last year where it was like, I need to do something because why are our industry and the road safety sector working closer together? And I would see different instructors posting things. They may share a post or they may attend a, uh, an event or a conference and mention it, but nothing was ever done. It would just be they went to attend and it was that one person doing one thing. I think I then attended the Ice Live event, which I can never remember what I stands for, uh, Immersive Community Education, I think, somewhere along those lines. But it's like virtual reality. Uh, it was a lot of it. And I saw some of these uh, these speakers first and road safety speaking. I'm like, this is these are good people. I want to go talk to them. And then from there, it kind of snowballed. And a little shout out to someone here. I've mentioned quite a bit recently, but Les Hopkinson. It was when I went down to the expo last year. And I met up with Les before and we were talking. And I said, I can't do a road safety season. No one will listen. And he said, I will. And I thought, one person will listen, surely more will listen. And my goal has always been to help one person. If help one person, I'm happy. Screw it, let's do it. And it has just kind of snowballed more and more from there. And now we're at this point where I've got people within that sector coming to me with ideas. I've got people in that road safety sector sending me someone say, can you share this with instructors? Do you know anyone in your instructor network who can make use of this? And I've got instructors doing the same thing, saying, who can I go to for this thing? And it's like, the gap is being bridged. At the minute, it's like I'm the pillar in the middle of the bridge and people are jumping on me. <laughs> but that that bridge is starting to, to form. So, yeah, I think that answers your question. Yeah, definitely. Where that passion's come from and, and what you're doing with it. And it's been, I guess, time in and you just building yourself to a position where it's like, yeah, let's let's go do it, make it work. What's the what's the plan with it? The I wouldn't say end state because I've spoke to you quite a bit and it seems that <laughs> yours go off and evolve and you stick with it. But the initially at the minute, what are your plans with it? Where do you want to take it? There is an end goal. Uh, so okay. I will tell you the end goal, and it's, it's zero road deaths. That's wow. the end goal, you know, and that won't be because of me. But I may be able to help reduce those numbers slightly along with everyone else. You know, and if I can point our industry in that direction a little bit more, we can reduce those road deaths. And we, can, as instructors, can have a big impact on that. So that is the end goal. 
the the whole thing behind Vision Zero is we want road deaths halved by 2030 and road deaths at zero by 2050. So that's the end goal. Um, the other kind of end goal, and, and I don't know if this will ever be achieved, I'll be honest with you, but it's kind of a little thing for me. I, w- I would love it if for someone one day to ring me up and inquire for lessons and you know the questions you get where it's like, what are your prices? Where are you based? You know, those sort of questions. I'd love it if one of those questions were, which road safety charity do you support? I want driving instructors to be campaigning for road safety charities. So we'll all have different ones, obviously, because we'd have different little passion projects and stuff. But how cool would it be if that was one of the questions that potential students are asking and using the decider? Not how much you charge, but... Which charities do you support? That would that would be just such an amazing thing. So that's the end goal. In in terms of everything in between, I'm less sure. It's, <laughs> as I said, I've got this season of the podcast. I've got the the pro, uh, project. Edward, I've got the um, driving instructors of Vision Zero podcast coming up. It's all about creating, uh, sharing information, inspiring people, and providing resources. And from there, there's lots of ideas. I think I mentioned this before, but I don't want to go into too much because some of them won't come off and some of them will. And so I don't want to go too far down that that rabbit hole just yet, but only because of that reason. But yes, big goal, zero road deaths and uh, instructors can have a massive impact on that. So some numbers that you threw out then was um, halving the number of road deaths by 2030, I think it was, and zero by 2050. What can we do as instructors to set our students up in the best possible way to achieve that? So again, I'm going to take a slightly different perspective here because we immediately, when you say that stuff, we immediately think in car. Yep. I think there's two types of instructors at the minute, the ones that are doing their best in car and the ones that don't give a fuck. And we can't reach those ones that don't care. So screw them. Let them just keep doing what they're doing. They're going to contribute to the, the deaths of people on the road, and there's very little we can do about that. Very little. That's kind of one we have to lead to the DVSA. Well, you know, when you see the bad eggs, you can report them and let the DVSA do what they do. They will get weeded out eventually. It will take time, but that's part of why it's a, a rolling campaign rather than let's cook his fingers today and stop our road deaths. But then you've got the ones that can and, and are doing the best. Well, in car, I don't think there's a lot more that we can do to campaign for road safety. I think that we've got some amazing trainers in the industry, whether it's Bob Morton or Emma Cottington or Lee Jout and Mick Knowles or whoever's doing what, that are, even if they're not using the term road safety, they are creating that that same ethos. You know, they're talking about plan set and learning, they're using examples, they're they're helping people learn rather than shouting at them. They're using the GD. I'm going to use the proper name. Goals for driver education matrix. That you know, I don't think I need to come in and say, let's do more in the way we teach, because I think they're falling into those two categories. But where we can help and where we can improve is the different resources we can provide, the different information we can provide. There are some parents out there who put too much pressure on their kids who go, well, I passed 20 years ago with only 10 hours of driving and, you know, yeah, yeah but double mini roundabouts didn't exist and they even did bus lanes <laughs> and there were like 10 million less cars on the road than Obed. So, but there are those people there. But if we share, i use an example again, that drive fit video, the drive fit resource, and again, I can give you all links to this stuff to put in the show notes. If we share that video with every single parent of the students we teach, let's say 50% don't watch it. So out of the 50% that's left, maybe half of those watch it and like, oh, yeah, whatever. And then you've got 25% left, and then maybe 15% of them watch it and maybe just give a little nudge to the kids or whatever. But then maybe 10% go, oh, crap. I didn't realize that was the case. When I learned Strive, we didn't have this science. We didn't have the VR headset that can track where your eyeballs move so we actually see where people are looking. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah, my kid needs to be safe. Let me pay for another 10 hours. That's where we can make a difference. And where the other place we can make a difference along that route, and this is something I struggle with, you know, hands held up. 
not giving up. So if we send it to a parent and the parent doesn't watch it, not going, right, well, I won't bother again. Going, well, I don't care if you don't watch it. I've sent you it. I can't make you watch it, but I can give you the information. So next parent, I'm going to give them the information. Next parent, I'm going to give them. And you keep going like that, and eventually someone will pay attention. And by doing that, you have potentially saved or prevented you know, someone from getting in a collision. So I think that we can provide that information. We can provide those resources. I caught myself there using the word, I was going to use the word accident rather than collision. We can watch how we speak. You know, the, the episode I did recently with Rebecca Morris, she put it brilliant on there. We shouldn't be using the term accident because we don't know if it's an accident. If after everything's gone through, you know, if there's a collision and it goes to court and they get found out, yes, it was a complete accident, then yeah, it's an accident. Until that point, it's a collision. And that's not assigning fault. It was a collision. That's just the descriptive word to describe it. St. Accident trivializes it. So we can use the right terms. I also think the thing we need to do, or can do, sorry, to, to help improve road safety is campaign. Because I'll ask you this. I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything, Josh, or, you know, this is meant that way. Um, what do you know about Vision Zero other than what I've told you today? Nothing. Apart right. from what you've, what we spoke about earlier, and what you've shared on socials, nothing. Have you come across the safe system? No. Right. Most instructors haven't. I only came across it because of the work I've done with Project Ed Edward. It's obviously it's em embraced me more in this this road safety sector. I think this is what we need to look at. So the safe system is that's how we get to Vision Zero. Now, I always forget one of these, so let's see what I can remember. But there's um, safe roads, safe drivers, safe vehicles, safe speeds, and post-crash care. I remembered all five. There you go. That's good. Um, the one that we obviously deal with is safe road users. We, that's, that's our thing. But there's still another four things in that safe system. We can still campaign for them. So the example I use here is road piece, because road piece uh, are all about post-crash care. That's their big thing. But they still campaign for the other four. They don't go, oh, this is our one, so screw the other four. They go, this is our one. This is this will take the bulk of our attention, but I'm still going to promote and shout about and chase up these things. So as instructors, we can encourage students to not buy the cheapest car they can when they pass the test because it's not going to be the safest car. We want them to get the safest car because in those first few years, they are most at risk of having a collision. So why not get the safest car? We can pass on that information. We can put it on the socials. We can talk about it on the socials. We can talk about why just because the speed test 30 don't mean we've got to do 30. So we're talking about safe speed. So we can campaign for this stuff. So yes, can we do more in car? Yes, of course we can. But I don't think that's where I need to put the focus with road safety because we're doing that in other areas. It's the, the the information, the inspiration, the campaigning. I think it's that where we can put the real road safety focus. This has changed my view massively on all of it. I wasn't sure what I was expecting tonight having the chat with you. But if we look at the social media reach that most of us have got as instructors, and you think that maybe one thing shared a week by all the instructors that are active on social media. I've shared very little on my learner account where I've got reach, whether that's with parents, with learners, or with people that are just waiting for lessons, whoever they are. So like you say, just reaching one person and affecting one person will have an impact. And I'd always generally thought road safety is in the car we can affect a lot of it in the car and we might but we can reach more people and have a bigger impact by like you say using the socials and the bigger platform and the resources that are out there as well so that's an interesting kind of angle on it that i'd not considered until today so anyone that's watching that is considering this Let's start sharing it. Let's start getting that information out there for our learners, parents, 
and anyone else that's following because everyone knows someone that's driving. Yeah, it's it's doable. And I think, as I kind of touched on before, it's really easy to get downbeat and downtrodden when you put something out there and no one responds to it. It might be seen by 200 people on Facebook, for example, but it either gets no interaction or it gets negative interaction. It's really easy to give up. The The problem is you don't always know who you're influencing. You know, you mentioned before, right at the start of this, about when you get your learners coming to you and you've got to get them out of the bad habits they've picked up from being in a car for 17 years. Well, you're creating good habits. By posting this stuff on social media, you're training parents. You're training other people. Some people will pick it up quicker than others. Some people will see your first post and go, oh, I never thought of it that way. A bit like I did with the Project Edward thing and five people every day. Some people will just click on that straight away and go, yeah, okay, I'm going to do that. I don't want to die today, so I'm going to do that. Other people shrug their shoulders, and it might take them four years to come around. But your post may be one of the things that works towards that. And I'll give you one example with that, actually, because I, I do the Five Minute Theory podcast. I get very, very little feedback on that. You know, when I put my, my social media post up by, very few people come on and comment and say, oh, I love this or whatever. However, I quite regularly, a few times a month, get messages from people that I've never spoke to, no idea who they are, and they'll say, pass my theory to the test today. Thank you for your podcast. It's really helped. I have no idea what's helping that person. No idea at all. They've only contacted me because they've passed. You know, so... We never know who we're helping, even if you're not getting that positive reinforcement. We still could be helping someone, and I think it's too easy to dismiss that. Fascinating approach to it. and um, I can do more. I'm not going to speak for everyone. I know I can do more, and I'm going to go away from this one and think about how I can do more. But with the road safety sector and the, the different kind of approaches that everyone's got is that what they're wanting with this link now with the driving instructor industry what are they expecting do they want that almost platform that we can all give to them to our learners and to their parents is that what they're wanting hard to give you a definitive answer for that because a lot of the people I speak to are quite raw in they don't know what they want because I keep referring to her but she was the best person to speak to about this in Rebecca Morris she was very much like I don't know why we haven't worked. why don't we work with driving instructors you guys are the core you guys have sitting like we're 40 50 200 hours in some cases why are we working with you and she's almost baffled by this so I think there's still a bit of working out how they can use us more. But I am certain that none of them are going to say no to you sharing the content. And every single person I've spoken to so far has been open in saying, yeah, contact us, reach out. We want to work with you. Now, obviously, there's a caveat to that in that if 40,000 people messaged <laughs> Rebecca Morris tomorrow, she's not replying to 40,000 people. And there'll be some projects they don't want to take part in. But I'm going to stick with that example, actually, because in May, um, there is the Road Peace event. And it is, and I'm frantic looking at my calendar, it is uh, the week of the 16th to the 19th. And it's the Road Peace Challenge. And what they're doing is they are walking, I forget the exact number, I think it's 1,766 miles. I think that's right. It's one seven something um, because that was the number of people that died last year, or in 2022, sorry, 1,766, I want to say. I might have that wrong. Um, so they're walking that many miles, and they're raising funds, and it's a big road piece event. Well, we could get involved in that. Why can't driving instructors contribute towards that? It's really easy to get involved in. They've got the application page on the website. Go in, fill it in, say what are going to do, send it off, Bob's your uncle. You know, that's... Even if you don't want to go and do loads of stuff on social media or go and give up loads of time, which is fine. People have lives. People have businesses to run. And you have to prioritize your driving school. You have to over, you know, promoting whatever you want to promote. But you could do that. 
or you could get involved with Project Edwards event, or you could get involved with the uh, break campaign, which I think is in August or November. I can't remember what's on my head. But there's all these different ones that go out throughout the year you could get involved in. And I've had a little chat with Chris Benson, actually. The, Chris Benson organised the ADI Walkback. Yeah. Well, ADI Walkback in May is the week of Road Pieces Challenge. And Road Pieces Challenge is walking 1766 miles. So why can't those two be combined? You know, so it doesn't have to be, I'm just going to do this thing, or I've reached out to so-and-so and they said, no, it can be right. Well, they obviously want people to take part in this challenge. Let's go take part in this challenge. So as as for what that side of the industry wants, yes, obviously they want us to share their stuff. But we can also go to them with ideas and say, what would you like from us? How can we help? And they may say, I don't know. They may say you can't. Or you may get them on a good day and they go, here's an idea for you. Why don't you be the driving school that does this thing? I love that. Such a bigger picture approach to it and a collaboration with a lot of experts. I know when we was talking before hitting record and I've seen and listened to some of the people that you've had on, especially with the Megan R and the Megan R2, the the level that these people are operating at and the information that they've got and the technology that's being used, it can add so much benefit to what we're doing and the product we're offering our students. It's uh, it's good to see that you're bridging that gap between everyone and, and I'm excited to see where this goes over the next few years because I think you was right in what you said there. They don't really know what they want from us and i think it's probably just been a case of i mean i don't know i don't know the history of it but have we ever really worked together or is it just been everyone's doing their own thing and it just takes someone to see that we can link it's a thing people have you know there, there are people that have worked and championed let me rephrase that there are driving instructors that have worked on championed the road safety sector you know, you had uh, Graham Hooper on recently uh, on, on this podcast. He's someone that regularly champions and shares stuff from um, Project Edward and, and other places. Um, so people have done it, but I don't think it's been done on a grand scale before. I think it's, even with the associations, they do stuff. So I know that um, the DIA have done something recently about milestones, and, and I... I've yet to watch their YouTube video and I feel really bad that I haven't watched it. So I can't comment more on this, but it's about the dif different stages of learning to drive. You do it almost in sections, in milestones. Effectively, that's what it is. So there are projects going on, but it's always, or since I've been in it, it's felt like them and us. And it shouldn't be, it should be more blended. So it should be easier for driving instructors to access the road safety sector. And it should be easy for the road safety sector to access us. And I think that's what I'm trying to do. If I can be that bridging point where uh, Dr. Liz Box comes over and says, Terry, I've got this uh, video on Drive Fast, Die Young. It's on BBC iPlayer. Can you share it with your network? Well, she knows full well I'm not going to discriminate. I will share it with everyone I can. Whereas potentially if she said it to someone else, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to offend anyone, they would only share it with their little bit of a network. But me, I'll share that bugger with everyone. I, I don't care. And I will hope then that the associations will share it with theirs and it'll cascade. So I'm hoping that I can be that that bridging point where people come to and say, can you send this to everyone? You know, imagine if the driving instructors to Vision Zero page had 20,000 followers on it, because you're not going to get 5,000 ADIs on there. So 20,000 followers, well, that's then where people are going for that that road safety information. And I think that's that's what I'm after. And I think that's where it needs to come from. So people have done it before, but I think it's either been projects that are, oh, this is my project, no one else will have to touch it, fingers off, or on an individual basis. That's something that I've struggled with, and I've not put the time in to be honest i've not done the research that you've done i've not done the looking into everything as as much as you have but where to start 
where to go, who's who's the contact, where do we get the information? Because there is so much out there. It's where do you start? And from the sounds of it, we start going to driving instructors to Vision Zero. And from there, we can get the information that we want from the people that are providing it. I'm looking forward to it. And it's really changed. Today's really changed how I'm thinking of road safety. And hopefully that for anyone that's watching or listening is I try and do a lot in the car and I'd not really considered outside of the car. And when we look at the generation that we're teaching generally, they're glued to social media. That's that's where they spend their time. Even my children, they're not driving yet, but they very rarely put technology down. So having more being shared on those platforms is going to have such an impact long term. And we can see your target of 2030 and then 2050. Well, it's not my target. It's the Vision Zero target. But here's the thing when it comes to social media. We've got three choices. We can either do nothing we can be negative or we can be positive. They're pretty much literally the three choices, right? So we can go out and we can talk about how um, I feel safe using my mobile phone. Why shouldn't I use my mobile phone when I'm driving? I feel safe doing this. There's no problem doing this. I know I'm not legally allowed to, but I reckon I could do it safely. But don't use your mobile phone, kids. (laughs) Or we can go out and say, Actually, these are the reasons why you can't use a mobile phone. It's actually less to do with using your hand and looking down. It's more to do with the fact that your cognitive brain process won't function properly and you will not pick up as much. And most of the time, you will get away with it. And because you get away with it, you will feel more empowered. And you'll feel like, oh, yes, I am a good driver. I can do this with my mobile phone because, look, every time I've done it for the last 762 times, I've got away with it. Until you get to time 763, then it goes wrong. It's up to you which information you put out. You can put out the negative one or you can put out the positive one, or you can not put out anything. And the the other kind of thing I'd throw your way is this, this podcast. This is a guess. I appreciate this is a guess, but I'm, I'm going to ask you to guess. What percentage of your podcast has found you because of social media? All of it. Right. So 100% of your audience. Yeah. So maybe, why not yeah, do the same? Maybe, maybe three people that I've spoke to in person, but I very rarely talk to people in person. Talk to people and tell them. So yeah, we'll go with at least 97% is through social media. <laughs> So why not use that same process with the road safety? Because if you've built an entire or 97% of your audience off of social media, then why can't you do the same for road safety? Yes, it's not sexy. Yes, it's not going to get you 20 million subs tomorrow. But you can do it. You've demonstrated that. You can use social media to grow an audience. So why not do the same thing with road safety? Now, look, again, I will hold my hands up. I'm being honest. My... uh, road safety stuff on my stuff tc drive my driving school is abysmal my excuse well i'm doing it all over here you know (laughs) i still should be doing it on my stuff as well on my driving school stuff but i also don't want people to feel obliged i think this is the other thing i want to get across we you're not obliged to do it we only do it if you want to you know it's like you have to put you and your business first if you feasibly do not have time to read a post or or read a paper or watch a video or share something on social media around Vision Zero, then don't do it. I I wouldn't hold it against you if you don't have time. I may hold it against you if you've got time and you don't. That's a different thing, but I I don't want anyone to feel bad for not doing it, it, you know, is what I'm saying. But I think where we can, we should. And again, you've made me think of it from a different point of view, the the social media reach. You're right. I don't know how many people I reach. I've got Facebook, Instagram-ish and YouTube. So the the numbers, but it's all been reached just through social media predominantly because I didn't know anyone when I started. And I knew three driving instructors in the, no, two in the local area. That was it. So we can affect 
a lot of people in a fairly short space of time as well, less than a year. So, yeah, I would like to do more time, time wise. I've never got time for anything anyway. But road safety is kind of, I feel we're responsible for a large, large part of it. Whether we are or whether we're not, that's my opinion because. We're that first step for people getting on the road independently. So I do feel responsible for the safety of my students after they pass as well. So to be able to give them the best chance of a safe driving career is important. And it's well, why I do the job that I do. Sorry, I mean, I'm interrupting you, but is, you know, you, you asked for things we can do. How many of those students you check in with? after six months or after a year? I've maybe spoke to one or two students since they've passed. One one asked me a question. I ended up taking him out on the road. <laughs> Didn't charge him. He got a free lesson out of me. Um, and another one dropped me a message a few months after. But that's it. Very few. And again, this isn't criticism. Uh, this is non-judgmental discussion because I didn't used to contact mine. Well, I contact mine now after three months, six months, and a year to check in to make sure they're okay. And that's what we can do to help world safety. Because what if that student in a year's time is stressing because something's gone wrong and they're panicking, but they don't want to tell their mates because they're embarrassed. They don't want to come back to me because, oh, God, I've been away for a year. What's Terry going to think of me? You know, but if I reach out to them and check, there's more chance. And, and the other thing I did recently, and again, I appreciate there'll be people that won't be able to do this. So, you know, this isn't me taking shot anyone, but I'm in a position where I can. All of my students at pass, and this, I decided to roll this right back basically forever. If they have a problem post test, they can come back to me for free. Whether that's a phone call, whether that's meeting in a cafe because you just need a chat, or whether that's having some form of training. Now, I'm not going to give them 20 hours of training for your charge but they could have a lesson or something to get them back on track. So if there is a problem post-test, because let's be honest, that is the first time they will ever have driven with no one in the car. So even if we do prepare them to the best of his ability, there's still the possibility of something goes wrong. But that's one way that I found to help them is to say, look, if you struggle, this is free. Please reach out. And then to chase up. Is everyone going to do it? Of course or not. Is everyone going to respond to my text? Well, so far, I think they have. But in theory, no, they're not going to. Is everyone going to tell me if there's a problem? No, they're not going to. But might someone? Yes. And that's the thing. It's really, I've said this a few times, but it's really easy to go, well, everyone's not doing it. So what about the one person that does? We can't ignore the one. Now, I know what Spock says, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. But I'm the one. But it's we have to pay attention to that one as well. And sometimes it can be really easy just by offering a, a text message. So th there's all kinds of things we can do. And sometimes it's thinking out of the box. That's interesting, offering that time and your reasonings why as well. I'd not considered it. And I had, like I say, I had a student reach out and I ended up taking him out. It was only about half hour, 40 minutes, because I couldn't describe the situation via text message, I was like, look, what are you doing this afternoon? Where, whatever day it was, we'll get out. Um, and yeah, he felt better after that and more confident. But he was someone that would reach out and ask for help if he needed it. A lot of my students wouldn't. You're giving me loads of work tonight that I'm going to go away and I feel like I want to do. How I incorporate a lot of it into what I'm currently doing. I need to sit down and figure it out. But just thinking outside of the box, like you said there, just checking in with your students. You're, you're doing well to get most of them replying though, but I've not tried it. I'm just guessing at the minute that most of mine probably won't. I struggle to get a review off half of them. I mean, we can we can talk about reviews if you want. I've got a good, good <laughs> technique for reviews, but it's do something. That's it. Don't attempt to do everything because, you know, you'll know this from, you know, uh, going to the gym or whatever. If you go in and like, I'm going to do everything full on beast mode today. And not only am I going to the gym, but I'm also going to get 15,000 steps in and 
get my calories in, I need a half a cow or whatever. It's like, it's not going to work. But if you do something, maybe the thing you start doing is going, I'm going to start checking on my old students one a day until I've checked on them all. Five minute job. But you're doing something. Maybe it's, I'm going to start putting a post up on Tuesdays and I'm going to find some sort of road safety campaign. And because my brain ain't working, I'm not even going to type out, I'm just going to share something on a road safety campaign. You're doing something. So don't try and do everything. Try and do something. And when you get into that routine of doing something, you can probably quite easily add one more thing on and then one more and one more. And all of a sudden, you become the drive. You become the driving instructor in your area that promotes road safety, not just the driving instructor with a really good pass rate, but, you know, accidentally touches your student's thigh. You're the one that's safe and champions this stuff. Your expression then, if you're listening to this rather than watching, just go back and watch that bit. <laughs> I love how you so casually slip them in and just carry on with the serious point that you're making. I will, I'll tell you why I casually slip it in, because that's what the instructors do. The instructors that accidentally touch someone's thigh <laughs> or make the joke about, oh, one of them buttons is under, you might as well do another, or, or put some in a text message. They do it that casually. So screw it. I'm going to be that casual about them. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna we're gonna end up calling out a few people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. right, if you're a student listening to this and your instructor does that, find a better one. <laughs> report them. Don't just find a better one. Report them. If, mm. if someone is doing that on a driving lesson, and like you said, if you especially if you're a student or if you're an instructor that knows of an instructor doing this, or even just heard rumors, report them. We we don't need seventeen, eighteen. We don't need any age person being put in that situation. It's it's not right, and it is a it is a bugbear, and I am that casual about it because of how casual they should they are about it, and we should be able to say this stuff, um, and you know it's the sort of thing we get flack for, you know, saying it, but we'll call it out. I think we could do another episode on this. <laughs> Some of the Busy stories that we hear, it's uh, you're you're right. Um, we're not going to delve into it any deeper, but it. It shouldn't be happening. And uh, before we do get any deeper into that, should we do some tell me questions and see how we get on with those instead? Yes, I'll try not to be rude for the tell me questions. No, you can be. This is okay. this is the fun bit. You get to say whatever you want with this. With it, no, you can. It's you. Say what you want. So, it's can tough. you tell me? We'll go with the first one. Can you tell me what car you would drive if it was the only car you could drive forever? I've not got a great answer for you for this one because I am not a big car guy. I like driving, don't care about cars, uh, but it would be a Mini Cooper and it'll be a three-door Mini Cooper because I like small cars and I like my Mini and I regret getting rid of it. Interesting. Do you know there's so many people that go back to a car that they've already had and they want it back? <laughs> I hopefully, I intend that after, after because I've, I've leased my car, so I think I've got, another year left on it i intend to um go back to a mini after this one potentially even an electric mini but um we'll see we'll see nice can you tell me if you could deliver a driving lesson to anyone who would it be so i'm i'm not sure if i'm going to give you the answer you want for this one because my first thought for this was i was, I was thinking about people but i'm like I don't think they need lessons. So my first thought was Jensen Knuckles, um, because any opportunity to get in close proximity of Jensen Knuckles, I would be well away. Um, but then I thought he could probably teach me how to drive better. That guy's nuts. Who's that? He was um, Dean Winchester in Supernatural and Soldier Boy in The Boys. Right. Um, I am heterosexual, apart from Jensen Knuckles. That's the rule. Oh, okay. Uh, it's like when you can cheat on your wife with your list. It's like that I can cheat on women with gents knuckles. That's it. Um, so yeah, he would be in there. But he's like the coolest bloke in the world. And the way he drives is in parlor around on supernatural. And he does that stunt driving himself. It's like he could teach me stuff. So he was my initial thought. I'm like, actually, I think he'd probably be giving me the lesson. So who would I give a lesson to? Well, again, maybe this isn't quite what you're after, but I love taking on students other people have rejected. 
it's so much fun. Um, so when I get a student that's either ditched their instructor or they've been ditched by an instructor or whatever story, whether true or false, they're so often the best students, so often the best students. And there's been a couple of times where I've seen uh, people local to me on Facebook saying, avoid this student. And then they come to me and I'm like, oh, we've been on together, yes. I want to work with this one now. Why do I, why have I got to avoid him? And I take him on and it's just brilliant. So I, I like to work with the students other people ditch. I like that. And, and they need someone that's going to give them the time as well. But Jensen Knuckles. <laughs> we got two answers. You're allowed a few bonus answers. You have to put a, a picture up of him on here somewhere now when we say that. I'm going to have to Google him first. I have no idea who he is. Maybe I'll know who he is when uh, when I Google it, see his face. I'll I'll put a picture in just for you. I'll do some extra editing for you, Terry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the next one, can you tell me the best piece of advice you ever received? Uh, JFDI. Have you heard of that phrase? No, I don't think just, so. Just fucking do it. <laughs> um, it was passed on to me by Dan Meredith and others, admittedly, but Dan was uh, the one, I don't know if he coined it, but I heard him using it and then he's sped it to me several times in the past. And, you know, it's that's the sort of thing of when I'm debating whether to send someone an email, have I got the confidence to send this JFDI? It's like, if I'm feeling a bit fed up and it's like, oh, should I go and do Josh's podcast now? Because I'm tired and... I've been rejected today and uh, my ankles are in and all this kind of stuff. It's like, no, JFDI, just, just on the polite version, just crack on because <laughs> you always feel better afterwards. You know, and yes, there are obviously times you need to take a step back. There are times for self-care and looking at you, but sometimes self-care is just doing it because when it's done, it's done. Then you can have the time off. Then you can self-care more. But yeah, JFDI. Love it. That's a great answer. Can you tell me your favourite book? No, but I can tell you several. Um, Let's have several. Let's add to that reading list. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stephen King's Dark Tower series is King at his absolute finest. Um, it is the only, and I'm going to try and phrase that just to make sure I don't spoil it for anyone that reads it. It's the only series of books or book I've ever read where I've got to the end and then started reading again from book one to see if it's any different. So I cannot tell you why, obviously, because I'll spoil it, but I finished book seven and went straight back to book one to see if it ended any different. Clearly, you can't. It's a book. But I had to check and then reread through the whole thing. Um, so that was it. The, if we're talking nonfiction, there, there's a few that stick out to me. I think there's there's an audio book I would recommend immediately by Jen Sincero, an audio book overwritten because she makes it with her voice, absolutely makes her voice. Uh, it's called You Are a Badass. It's a little bit woo-woo in places. It's a little bit spiritual, but 95% of it is the most ma motivating thing you will ever hear. It's It's ridiculously good. And she tells it, the honestly, audiobook or anything else with that, definitely. Um, Felicia Day, uh, who was in Supernatural also. Um, oh, didn't end well. Spoilers. Um, but she wrote a book. I think it was called Embrace Your Weird. Embrace Your Weird, not a New York accent. And that was something that helped me come out of my shell. Really good, lovely book. If you're, if you're lacking in a bit of confidence or you're not sure how to be yourself, Embrace Your Weird. Then you've got, I've got some books here. Look. You've got books from B to A by Craig Preedy. I think you've had on Craig Preedy. Yes. Yeah, we uh, had him on. Untwisting the Road to Success, Neil Whiteman. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Who's in the Driving Seat by Jed and Claire Wilmot. Yeah, well, I've had them on, but been, great book. Been recommended a lot yeah. on, on the episodes there, yeah. Another couple of fiction books. So absolute classic is Dracula. Gets a lot of stick because it's very, very long-winded. But I kind of like it. It's a bit like Moby Dick in that you just read it. There's, you know, that you just read it. There's no other way to describe it, but you just read it. And it's one of those books that leaves an impression when you finished it. 
um, so Moby Dick as well in that case. And also the, one of the most recent book I've read that absolutely scared the bejesus out of me, All the White Spaces by Ali Wilkes, which okay. it's about a ship that goes to Antarctica. And I will leave it at that. But that was obviously a book I had to have the light on to read, but that's fairly obvious. But I couldn't read it in the dark. I had to read it in the daytime because no, that wasn't it, it was uh it was a brilliant read, but it was um hard and unpleasant in places and terrifying. Um so yeah, all those books. That's just bumped my reading list up by a few and <laughs> find some more hours in the day. We'll get them put in the description as well for anyone that was listening and wants to have a read of any of them or a listen to them on audio, just head to the description if you need to. Um, can you tell me one message you would give someone who's coming into the driving instructor industry? Yeah, into a community. Um, it, it's something that so many people don't do. You know, we'll we'll have our trainer or one aspect of a driving school that we're in or, you know, solo person or, or whatever. And... There's so many good people out there um, and we can be in those communities. I mean, what you're doing here is a community. Your listeners are a community, whether it's in the comments, whether it's, uh, you know, just through you, whether it's just listening, it's part of the community and you've built up from scratch using social media, as we said before, um, or whether it's getting into the right Facebook groups. And the only way I can tell if the right Facebook groups is to go on them and ask a question. If you get loads of dicks answering, it's not the right Facebook group. So find one. The Instructor Podcast is obviously a great one. It's mine. But there are others out there. Uh, Ray Seagraves is a, a great one. Um, also, Bob Morton's Client Set Learning one is a great one. So free there. Lee Sperry is, is pretty good as well, the ADI PDI dot. So there are some good Facebook groups out there. Get part of an association. Um, it, it's not expensive. Um, even the ADI and JC, four quid a month. If you sign up to Instructor Podcast Premium, you now get that half price. So sign up to instruct the podcast premium. You can get two quid a month for the ADI and GSC. So the great thing about the NGSC, even if you never use it, you're still part of a community. You'll get in their Facebook group. You can go to their events that they put on. You can do all this stuff. So yeah, get in a community. You will feel less alone and you can gauge opinions of people who know what they're talking about rather than people that go, oh, I once heard this thing, so I'm going to go and say the thing. Great bit of advice there for anyone coming into the industry. I wish I'd have got that when I was becoming a driving instructor. Figured it all out the hard way. And uh, here we are now. Yep. So can you tell me one piece of advice you give a student before they go for the driving test? Just drive. Just drive. That's all you're doing. Only two things different on a driving test. That's the emergency stop and a parallel park. Other than that, just drive. Nice. Straight to the point. That's all you need. You don't need to do anything different. Just drive. Great answer. Next one. Can you tell me something you wish you were uh, you wish you were better at? I wish I was better at taking my own advice. <laughs> I genuinely believe that I give out really good advice, whether that's in like a, a paid professional coaching capacity whether it's in a, a Zoom chat, whether it's, um, you know, just someone having a chat with me at test center, whether it's someone dropping a message and saying, Terry, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, the risk of sounding pompous, I genuinely think I'm, I, I know my stuff. If I don't know it, I don't offer advice on it or I'll send them to someone that can. But I am really, really bad at not taking my own advice. Um, yeah, it's... If I took my own advice, I would be in a lot hell of a lot better position than I am now. So there's something I'm really bad at not taking my own advice. I think we can all get guilty of that. We can see from the outside looking at someone else and what they need to do. It's difficult to to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Nice answer. And the last one, are there any other messages that you'd like to share? I'm going to touch back on uh, some I mentioned before, and it's do something. Just do something. And and whether that's around road safety, whether it's around your own personal development, whether it's around growing your driving school, whether it's around reading a book, 
you know, if, if you read a page a day, you're going to read a book a year, which is more than a lot of people, you know, so do something. And when you get comfortable doing that one thing, you can then move on to the next thing. And that might be reading two pages a day, you know, and the great thing about reading one page a day, no one just reads a page a day. If you go to read a page, you'll guarantee you'll read a couple. So therefore you get a couple of books in that year. So yeah, that, the, I think if I was given a, a, an overall kind of message, it would be just do something, start somewhere and do something. I love that. A great place to kind of wrap up the episode as well, just getting on, doing something. And the, the biggest lesson I've learned recently is you never know where it's going to take you and what opportunities come your way just from starting one thing with your, I can't remember what the phrase was, Dan Meredith's phrase. Just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. Yeah. Can't remember that. But just if you have that attitude, you, you never know where it's going to take you. Well, if you'd not started this podcast, you'd never have met me and you'd have been a hell of a lot worse off for it. Exactly. The advice that you've given me has shaped this podcast that's still not a real podcast, but there we go. <laughs> Closer. Uh, Terry, thank you very much for uh, for your time tonight. Before we disappear, where should we send people? We've dropped them in, but let's get your socials in. And how do they, how do people find you? It depends what you're after. Uh, Instructor Podcast stuff is www.theinstructorpodcast.com. Uh, also released a new podcast this year on January the 1st called One Minute Driving Instructor Tips, which is, well, what it says in the tin, Driving Instructor Tips in under two minutes. The um, best place to find that is on all your podcast players. Just search for One Minute Driving Instructor Tips. And then Driving Instructors 2 Vision Zero. Again, I would be following Instructor Podcast stuff because a lot of it is still around there, especially with this season based around road safety. But you can find that Driving Instructors 2 Vision Zero on uh, Facebook, and that will be getting more and more prominent, especially when this season of the podcast finishes. Love it. We'll get all those links in the description for you as well. So anyone that wants to head there, get it out the description and see what Terry's up to. Um, I'm excited to see where you go with this. It's uh, worthwhile and an interesting venture. So good luck with it. All right, see if we're going to go great guns or down its ass, and it'll be fun, fun either way. I can't see it dying on its ass. I reckon you got this. Time will tell. But thank you, Josh. Pleasure as always. Thank you very much, Terry. It's been great.